Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Shrew's Nest. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a young sister narrating that unlike other children, she learned from her older sister, Monsi, the bedtime horror stories that the world is a scary place. Sometimes, Monsi's stories would be so scary that the young sister would just pretend to be asleep. Monsi would leave her bedroom crying. It wouldn't be until years later that the young sister found out that Monsi was crying because after she left the young sister's bedroom, she faced her own nightmares. The young sister also realized that Monsi's scary stories were from the Bible. The young sister continues her narration, saying that Monsi's nightmare began when their mother died giving birth to the young sister. Because of this, the young sister grew up, believing that she was the reason for the family's misery. Their father was a cruel man, and he became crueler when their mother passed away. At present, Monsi works as a seamstress to support herself and her sister. Their father is now gone too. The young sister, now 18 years old, helps out by assisting Monsi and working at a store. The years have heartened Monsi. She is scared of the outside world and refuses to leave the house. Instead, she serves her customers from their apartment. On the day of her birthday, Monsi gifts her young sister with a bouquet of flowers before she leaves for her job. As she runs out of the door, she is greeted by one of Monsi's most loyal customers, a wealthy older woman named Puri. Puri and Monsi have grown close through the years. Puri suggests that Monsi open her own dress shop, but Monsi reiterates that she doesn't want to go outside. Still, Puri offers to fund her business. She had also provided Monsi with some morphine from her doctor husband. This is because Monsi has been suffering from terrible panic attacks. She's concerned about Monsi's well-being and doesn't want her to be stuck alone in the apartment, especially since her young sister is a woman now and might get married and start a family soon. Puri suggests that her husband can treat Monsi so she can live a normal life again, but Monsi doesn't want this. Later that afternoon, the young sister arrives home. She sees the open bottle of morphine on Monsi's bedside table and Monsi lying on her bed. Monsi wakes up that night and sees a vision of her father, berating her for not going to her mother's grave on her death anniversary. She goes to the window and sees her young sister being walked home by a boy. The two share a kiss. This angers Monsi, and it's like her worst fears have finally come to life. The young sister arrives at the apartment, and Monsi disciplines her with a stick. She forces her sister to confess her sins and pray, as she hits her repeatedly. Monsi tells her that men can only harm innocent women like her. The young sister spits out that no man can harm her more than Monsi can. Monsi reaches out to hit her again, and the young sister grabs a steam iron and hits Monsi in the head with it. The young sister hurriedly runs to the door and crawls out into the hallway. Because Monsi is agoraphobic, she cannot bring herself to step out of the apartment. The young sister passes out on the floor outside the front door. The upstairs neighbor, a young man named Carlos, is walking up the stairs with his friend. They're in the middle of an argument regarding Carlo's habit of being a coward and running away from his responsibilities. Carlos sees the unconscious girl and remarks that he would like to be with someone innocent like her. His friend comments that she is too young to be corrupted by him. They leave a blanket on top of her and disappear inside Carlo's apartment. The next morning, the young sister wakes up and sees the door is open. Monsi is now in a good mood and acts like nothing happened last night. But the young sister is not yet ready to completely forgive her yet. Monsi gets another vision of her father. This time, she remembers that after their mother died, her father had started preventing her from going outside on her own. Instead, he ordered her to just stay at home and take care of her sister. This memory sends Monsi into another panic attack. She takes more morphine and cries herself to sleep. She is later woken up by a series of loud bangs on the door. She hesitantly peeks through the peephole, but sees no one outside. The knocks continue, and when she opens the door, she sees an injured Carlos begging for her help. He explains that he had fallen down the stairs before losing consciousness. At first, Monsi slams the door shut on him because of her fear of men, but she eventually realizes that it was a very unchristian thing to do. Her conscience wins, and she pulls the man's body inside the apartment, along with his suitcase full of clothes. She places his body on the bed and washes the blood from his head injury with a cloth. She also unbuttons his bloody shirt and removes it. The young sister arrives home from work and notices that her older sister is acting very nervous. When she takes a bath, she notices that the washcloth she's using has blood on it. When she goes to the laundry hamper, she finds Carlo's bloody shirt. Monsi has no choice but to show her the unconscious Carlo's on the bed. The young sister is shocked and flees to her room and locks the door. Later on, Monsi subtly threatens her young sister. She says she will throw her out of the apartment if she tells anyone that Carlo's is here. 
Carlos finally wakes up. Aside from his head injury, one of his legs also suffered significant damage. Monsi lies to him, saying that a doctor had gone by to treat his leg while he was asleep. He thanks Monsi for rescuing him and asks for her help once again in getting him back to his apartment. Monsi offers to help take care of him too, as he recuperates from his wounded leg. Monsi tries to make amends with her young sister. She tells her that Carlos will be staying with them for a while longer. Later that night, the young sister sneaks out of her room once Monsi is asleep. She silently creeps into Carlos' room. She introduces herself to him and warns Carlos that her sister is not normal. Before she leaves, Carlos asks her to visit him again the next night. The young sister almost gets caught because Monsi enters the room and gives Carlos a glass of water with morphine. She continues to regularly dose his water with morphine. The next morning, she tells Carlos about her sister. She also adds that their mother is dead and their father left them 14 years ago. In turn, Carlos also shares his past. He had inherited some money from his dead parents. He also hints that he had done some bad things too. Carlos gives her the keys to his apartment and asks her to get some of his books so they can read together. Monsi wants nothing more than to please him, but her agoraphobia is preventing her from venturing outside. Puri comes again to their apartment to get the dress she commissioned. Monsi finally agrees to get therapy from her doctor husband. The doctor's first exercise for her is to try and touch the wall outside her front door. Monsi makes it one step before a panic attack seizes her and she vomits. Still, she is proud of her progress. The young sister is also happy for Monsi, but she doesn't really like that she is doing the exercise, so she can please a man. Monsi confesses that Carlos has changed her life and is making her feel that she shouldn't be afraid. That night, Monsi makes an effort to sit in front of her vanity and put on makeup. She wants to look pretty for Carlos. However, she sees another vision of her father, mocking her and calling her ugly. He compares her to her mother, who he says never needed makeup to be beautiful. Meanwhile, the young sister puts on one of her mother's dresses. She shows up in Carlo's room again, but the morphine has caused him to hallucinate. He calls out another woman's name and begs for her forgiveness. His loud cries also alarm Monsi, and the young sister barely slips out before Monsi enters the room. Monsi stays by his bedside the whole night. The next morning, the young sister stands in front of Carlo's apartment door. A blonde woman arrives with her father and a few policemen. They are searching for Carlos. The young sister hurriedly walks away and goes to work. The policemen knock on Monsi's door, and she denies ever knowing Carlos. Meanwhile, Carlos grows sicker and sicker from the morphine. Monsi is now putting it in both his food and water, so he would stay sick and she could keep him at her apartment. She confesses her love for him, but he knows she's lying about calling a doctor because his leg is worsening. He also knows that Monsi is drugging him with morphine. He wants her to let him go. Carlos calls her a liar because he is a liar too. He uses her younger sister as an example to show how Monsi keeps the truth from the people she loves so she can keep them with her. Monsi calls Puri and asks for more morphine. Puri is concerned that she may be misusing the drug, but Monsi sweetens the pot by saying she'll do Puri's niece's wedding dress for free. The young sister talks with the blonde woman in Carlo's apartment. She reveals that Carlo's is in her apartment. It turns out, the woman is Carlo's pregnant girlfriend, who he left the day of their wedding. Carlos didn't want to be a husband or a father, so he ran away from her, but he fell down the stairs accidentally. Monsi gets another vision of her father. He calls her a coward and tells her that she will never escape his clutches. Carlos' girlfriend heads to Monsi's apartment and pushes her way inside. She demands to know where Carlos is. She goes to the bedroom and is shocked by how horrible his injured leg looks. Monsi comes up behind her and hits her in the back of her head. Monsi's father continues to taunt her as she racks the girl's brain, trying to find a way to dispose of her body. Carlos wakes up. His leg looks purple all over, and he struggles to stand up. He crawls out of the bedroom and into the hallway. Inside the bathroom, Monsi is hacking his girlfriend's body to pieces. He silently crawls to the door and tries to open it, but Monsi sees him. The young sister stays in Carlos' apartment and sneaks away when the police search it. She returns to her own apartment and tells Monsi that she worked overtime at her job. Monsi pulls her aside for a serious talk. It's now time to tell her young sister the whole truth. It turns out when their mother died, their father turned mad and bitter with grief. He was so desperate to preserve the memory of his wife that he started abusing Monsi. Every night, Monsi would read to her young sister, hoping that she would sleep early and not hear the terrifying things that the father was doing to her. One day, Monsi saw that the father started to turn his hormone interest to her young sister. She was so filled with rage that she poisoned his food. For weeks, she kept his body on the bed. 
Then she eventually hid his corpse somewhere. Monsi simply told her young sister that their father had run away. The young sister runs to Carlo's room and wakes him up. She tells him that she doesn't know what her sister has done with his girlfriend. To their horror, they discover that Monsi had sewn Carlo's injured leg to the bedsheet to prevent him from running. Later, Puri and her niece drop by the apartment for a fitting. Puri mentions to Monsi that she had run into her young sister in the hallway, and she gave her the morphine for Monsi, so she can help her sister maintain safe doses. Suddenly, Carlos starts screaming from the other room. Monsi knocks him out by punching him in the face. Meanwhile, the niece looks at the dress hanging on the mannequin, and discovers that Monsi had used the girlfriend's headless torso as a mannequin. Puri and the niece try to escape, but Monsi kills them both. The young sister arrives home, and sees Monsi covered in blood. Monsi has gone full-on crazy, and demands morphine from her. The young sister lures her with the morphine bottle, and knocks Monsi out with a wooden cross. She then locks her inside her room. The young sister walks into the sewing room, only to find Puri and her niece skewered to death with sewing needles. The girlfriend's decapitated body is also on the table. The young sister grabs a pair of scissors, and proceeds to free Carlos from the bed. She wraps his bad leg in the bedsheet, and drags him to the front door. Monsi breaks free from the bedroom, kicks Carlo's injured leg, and slams his head on the wall. The young sister fights Monsi, and ends up stabbing her in the stomach. As she's dying, Monsi reveals that she hid their father's corpse behind the armor in the living room. She also hid a picture of the young sister, taken when she was born. The young sister goes to find the remains, and sees the picture of Monsi, holding her as a newborn. It's revealed that Monsi actually is the mother of the young sister, born out of the incestuous relations between her and the father. Monsi chose to kill her father to end another round of incest abuse on her innocent daughter. Monsi says that she was too ashamed to tell her the truth. The girl cradles her mother in her arms and sings to her until she closes her eyes forever. The girl drags Carlos out into the hallway. She comforts him because it seems that he does not have long to live either. He asks her what her real name is and she whispers it to him. He smiles and remarks that it's a beautiful name. He closes his eyes and the girl leaves his body on the floor. The movie ends with the girl narrating that she found a close connection with the shrew, which protects its nest with venom. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.